This is Twit. Holy cow, talk about breaking news. Well, it's not really breaking news, but breaking the tech world news is all this stuff with Facebook. Yeah, this is wild. This is something that um, maybe personally I had a little bit of like, <laughs> but I don't quite <laughs> understand everything that's going on. And so I thought we could bring in somebody to help us understand everything that's going on. So I'm excited to welcome back Emily Birnbaum from Protocol to give us a, a run through. Welcome back to the show, Emily. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Yes, we appreciate you. So let us kick things off. Uh, Facebook is in the midst of of a quite the debacle right now uh, because the um, what is it? the the uh, of course multiple states and the FTC have uh, have said hey. You know, we've really got an antitrust uh, issue here with you, and things aren't looking great. Um, let's talk about the cases, because there are multiple cases, a whole bunch of cases. And kind of, if you can for us, Emily, can you explain sort of an umbrella or or top-down look at, at what exactly kind of all of these cases are trying to uh, say about Facebook and what the concern is here? Yeah, so uh, uh, 46 states plus D.C. and Guam, as well as the Federal Trade Commission yesterday, both filed separate but twin lawsuits against Facebook. The broad contours of both of their cases are very similar, um, and ultimately we can expect they'll be consolidated into one like giant case. And they're basically saying that Facebook for years has engaged in a pattern of anti-competitive conduct, so they have used their dominant position in the marketplace of quote-unquote personal social networking um, to elbow out competitors, to buy up potential rivals, including, um, and most importantly, Instagram and WhatsApp. So a lot of these cases revolve around um, why they bought Instagram, why they bought WhatsApp. Um, was that to stifle a potential competitor? If so, that's a violation of U.S. antitrust law. And, um, you know, the remedies they have set out could go so far as to ultimately, you know, break up Facebook. They, the government could force Facebook to unwind the Instagram and WhatsApp mergers. Um, but that is probably years off. Yeah, we know that this is a thing that's going to take a lot of time. Um, but I am kind of curious, looking through this and kind of seeing these cases, uh, was it Instagram and WhatsApp that drew this this attention in the first place? Or are we looking at a situation where these different groups are kind of going, okay, we know there's an antitrust concern and these are the actions we can take to help undo these antitrust issues? It is, so basically I'm wondering, did Instagram and WhatsApp as you know the idea of pulling them away from Facebook – did that come afterward or was it the purchase of Instagram and WhatsApp that really sparked this antitrust lawsuit? Well, there's actually a tension at the center of this. The FTC, which is suing Facebook today, approved both the acquisitions of Instagram and WhatsApp uh, in you know 2012 and 2014, respectively. Um, and so at that time, they said, this is fine. You know, um, there were there was obviously internal dissent, there was external pressure, um, but they okayed those deals. And now, you know, about a year ago, they initiated an antitrust investigation into Facebook's dominance broadly. They looked at all sorts of questions around their business, around um, their power and how they exert that power in markets, and they came back to these acquisitions. So it's kind of interesting, a meandering path, but you know, just because the government said okay before, it doesn't mean that they can't you know, retroactively unwind those mergers and say, actually, it turned out there was an issue here. So um, you know, when you're an antitrust attorney, you really, really have to look at what is possible under the law. And so they brought a case that um, in many ways it's unprecedented. There are some pretty novel theories of harm in the case, but ultimately it's a pretty straightforward antitrust case. You know, you are not allowed to buy up rivals in order to stifle competition, um, potential rivals in order to stifle competition. So um, they probably, it's probably a mixture. You know, they probably brought this because it's their strongest case and because there's genuine concerns around these acquisitions. 
I think what's, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier uh, just a few minutes ago about how long or about the fact that this is this is likely to last a long time. I know the Microsoft antitrust case, what did that go on, like 21 years or something you know, before it finally reached some sort of resolution? And I mean, this, you know, has the potential to be on the same level of that. In many ways, Facebook kind of feels like the Microsoft of of yesterday as far as you know this this antitrust story is concerned what i'm curious about is all right so facebook instagram whatsapp they're all intertwined and that's kind of at the core of what this these cases are uh, scratching at let's say if this is going to take such a long time those services are going to integrate even deeper into facebook over time is that going to be even more difficult to unwind down the line whenever it may be or maybe it gets to a point to where an instagram isn't even a thing anymore because facebook's moved on to the next shiny object who, who the heck knows it's a long enough time horizon that that could be the case what are your thoughts there yeah i mean i think uh i think last year facebook raised a lot of eyebrows because they announced that they were going to be embarking on a mission to you know make their messaging across these three powerful platforms interoperable you know you're going to be able to message someone from instagram to uh facebook blue and that process has brought the services together more closely than ever. I mean, there's like actual engineering happening and it's going to be very hard to disentangle those things. So as of right now, I think reporters have posed the question, you know, are you going to have to stop that process? Are you going to have to stop integrating uh, further and further? And Facebook has kind of dodged the question or they've said, we don't know. It's actually possible that, you know, um, ultimately over the course of this case, there could be some sort of injunction that would force Facebook to stop that process, but we're not there yet. We're not even really close to there yet. So it's sort of yet to be seen, but there are levers the government could pull if that's a real question and concern. I mean, if you're Facebook right now, you don't want to take any, um, you don't want to make any sudden movements. You want to do anything too huge. You are under the most aggressive Microsoft or uh, the most aggressive spotlight that you could possibly be under. So um, sort of yes to be seen. Yeah, indeed, indeed. And then, of course, we have the the fact that, you know, president or president elect Joe Biden is uh, coming into his term next month. Um, barring any unforeseen circumstances. Um, and so in a Biden, like, is there any impact of a, let's say, a Biden presidency on how this plays out, on whether there are even more charges leveled uh, on this going forward? Does it, does it impact it in your view? Well, I think what's so interesting is actually the cases we have before us, which are extremely aggressive, you know, have been promoted by the most progressive advocates out there, um, some of these theories, um, they are from a bipartisan coalition of states, nearly every state, if you look at it, um, and a bipartisan group of commissioners at the FTC. So, you know, the Republican chairman, along with two of the Democrats. Um, so I think a Biden administration has pledged to take on corporate power, has pledged to um, act more aggressively against monopolies than, for instance, Obama did even. Um, so I think that the Biden administration has an opportunity opportunity to make this as broad as possible. Um, the Biden administration has a lot of incentives not to settle early. Um, so I, I think it's sort of a promise that the case will continue. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we will certainly, you know, uh, I was producing uh, another show on the network this week in Google yesterday, and Leo brought up the whole 21 years of Microsoft, you know, <laughs> antitrust case and, and just realizing that literally we are on day two of this journey. We are going to be talking about this for not weeks, not months, but most likely years. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out, especially with the scale and the scope of so many different entities kind of charging Facebook with the same thing and to uh, see how this trickles down to even other other companies who might be under the spot, you know, under the spotlight, like you mentioned, um, you know, maybe Apple or or uh, Microsoft, sorry, not Microsoft, Google, um, other companies uh, could potentially, you know, be impacted by how this goes as well. So, yeah, I, I guess, mean, uh, you know, the yeah. DOJ obviously last month sued Google under very different antitrust charges, but using the same laws. And that's another case sure. that's going to drag on forever and that's going to change uh, <laughs> the landscape of the tech industry for years to come. So um, we also do know that the government is investigating Amazon and Apple, and we don't know where that'll go yet, but this could set some important precedents.